Well, it's early April in Warner Park where there is a myriad of wildflowers that anybody can enjoy, even if you're not a gardener. I'm here with Deb Beasley, who's going to tell me all about the wildflowers. Welcome to Warner Park. Well, thank you. Well, I understand that these wildflowers are doing quite well right here in the sunshine, whereas I always thought they sort of needed shade. I think a lot of people think that with spring wildflowers, that they're very delicate and have to grow in the shade, uh, like uh, people think of ferns and so forth. But actually they come up and bloom before the trees leaf out. So it's very sunny down here now and they like and need that sun. Well, Deb, this is a particularly beautiful purple wildflower here and it seems awfully large for a wildflower. This is purple phacelia. It is a beautiful, uh, relatively large uh, spring wildflower. It's uh, just started blooming uh, for this season. Uh, here in early April uh, would be uh, the time to start seeing purple phacelia. Well, here we have one of the prettiest, uh, actually several of the prettiest uh, spring wildflowers, the Jack in the Pulpit, uh, which is the, uh, an unusual flower uh, shape. It's in the arum family, and uh, everything in that family has flowers that uh, contain a spathe and a spadix. The spathe in Jack in the Pulpit is that cup with a hood on it, and then the spadix is that little spike inside that sits in the cup. Now all of this is surrounding the flowers because they're actually very tiny little things at the very bottom of that spike inside that cup. And this, of course, is our beautiful trillium. Oh, they are just lovely. The trilliums um, are in the lily family, and trillium, of course, comes from uh, the word for three, uh, tri. Uh, they have three leaves, three sepals, three petals, and then six stamens. That's typical for the trilliums. And uh, most of the trilliums here in Warner Park are this uh, maroon red color. And they have a very unique uh, uh, odor, a fragrance coming from this maroon flower that uh, draws in flies and so forth as their uh, pollinator. Uh, because the maroon flower smells something like uh, rotting meat. <laughs> so not the cutting flower to have in your wildflower garden, but just something to <laughs> take a nice look at. Absolutely. Well, Deb, I see something here that you don't often see in the spring around my house. I see a rattlesnake. Oh. Fern! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, people freak out when we talk about this fern. This one's interesting. It has uh, spores that are on a separate stalk from the leaves. Most ferns produce their spores on the underside of the leaf. This one, as well as the one called grape fern, have their spores on a separate stalk in the center of the plant. It'll get a, a little bit taller and the spores will mature and look something like the rattler of a rattlesnake. <laughs> this is Dutchman's Bridges. Beautiful little bridges on a clothesline. That's how they get their name. White flowers, these are in the bleeding heart family. Uh, very distinctive. A lot of people recognize Dutchman's breeches because they're so unusual. They don't look like any of our other flowers. Each flower has two spurs uh, pointing upward, so the flower is hanging down and uh, dependent on uh, bumblebees to pollinate them. So they're uh, hanging there and out of reach for a lot of other insects uh, and crawling insects especially. Well, here we have another gorgeous purple flower. This is dwarf larkspur. It is beautiful. It's in the buttercup family, uh, a very diverse family with things that don't seem to look alike. But uh, larkspur, uh, its Latin name is delphinium, and that means little dolphin. And that refers to the shape of the flower buds before they open. Well, these delightful little parasols, Deb, I know that they're may apples. Yes, and uh, they are. They're described as like little umbrellas, little parasols, little palm trees. They're uh, well known, and mid-April is their time. Uh, we see some flower buds here. Uh, the flowers will bloom in April, and then around late summer, early August, say, the little apples will be produced. The, the August apples, we should call them. Well, Julie, this has got to be the prettiest part of Percy Warner Park, this section of the Mossy Ridge Trail. It's four and a half miles, but all you have to do is walk a half a mile on it and see a tremendous number of spring wildflowers. It's just gorgeous. 
Well, I've seen some really nice, lovely, tiny white flowers right here. Doll's Eyes is just starting for the season, so it's one of the later spring flowers. These little white flowers are gonna turn into seeds that are very white with a, a black spot on them. And sure enough, they look like eyeballs. Uh, and that'll happen around summer, late summer. Uh, you'll walk through the woods and, and see a cluster of eyeballs looking at you. So they're, they're quite fun. So every season in Warner Park is beautiful. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.